friends, welcome to the Cutting Room Floor podcast of Grace Church, where we talk about the things that didn't make it into the message, or maybe sometimes the things we wish we would have said differently. Uh, <laughs> my name's Larry. I'm one of your pastors. I'm joined by uh, Taylor, another one of our pastors. And uh, Taylor, you were up at the Cape Campus yesterday, and we've been in this series playlist where we're talking about songs or hymns that are meaningful to us, whether that's long-term or just in the immediate. Uh, and you... Uh, did a song by Cody Carnes or Maverick City, whichever way you want to... Whichever preference. Yeah. yeah whoever you like it. It's called better. Firm yeah. Foundation. Um, and I was just telling before we came on, it's my wife's favorite song right now. It's like the instant, like, tears rolling song. And I didn't give her a heads up, but that's what she was walking <laughs> into worship with. Um, uh, so it's just such an incredible uh, song. And I know uh, here at the Cape Campus, it's a song we do rather frequently. Yeah. Uh, it's just been a good heart song for... Um, for people. So what, what about the song has been resonating with you though? Like we, there's so many songs you could have picked, like, right. Like all the way back to, to yeah. your entrance into the faith. And yeah. this is where you camped. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, something that my, my wife and I will say often, this phrase that we say is that our story is a story of God's faithfulness. Mm. Um, early on, actually, when I was following Jesus, I really struggled with, with faith and we'll talk about that later. But, um, I, I lacked faith in a lot of different places. And then uh, once I started, you know, as I grew up in a, adulthood and really experienced pain and hurts mm-hmm. and things like that and, and disappointments, and then to look back and see God's faithfulness, um, it just resounded with me. And so this song, uh, The Firm Foundation, there's a line where it says, uh, he won't fail. He hasn't mm. failed me, you mm-hmm. know? And so, and then it goes on the train says, he won't, he won't. Why would he fail me mm-hmm. now? He, he mm-hmm. won't, he never has failed me. And it's that line. It's that, it's that thought that God, God won't. And there's so many seasons in our lives where we encounter hardships that we think, Oh, God's failed us. He's left me. He's abandoned me. Mm. And, um, it's, it's not true. It's just hard to see it in moments when we're really struggling. I journal. Mm-hmm. I'm a, a fairly regular prayer journaler. It helps me actually just focus more mm-hmm. than anything else. Sure. And uh, and I love to look. I journal actually not for in the moment, but for in the future when I look back and yeah. say, I was going through this season and I had no idea that God's hand was in this thing mm-hmm. or that he was showing up. But I can point back and be like, no, that, that was the hand of God right there. Yeah. Um, it could be small. It could be huge. But um, So that's why I'm just really holding on to the song, Firm Foundation, right now, mm-hmm. because uh, I'm just reminded of how good and faithful God mm-hmm. is. Even in times when I mess up, when, I, you know, when I'm not faithful to Him. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's what I've been hanging on to. Okay, great. I, I think it was just such a good theme, like, like holding on to our faith in seasons of disappointment um, and knowing that, that he's faithful. Um, and it, it's a good thing to be reminded of because we often fall into this trap of terminal uniqueness, right? Where <laughs> like, like nobody's ever had it as bad as right. me this season yeah. I'm going through. Like, no, that's not true. And yes. even though this feels bad and disappointing and hard right now, God is still God. Right. And, and he's, he's still faithful. And I, for me, that's what I hear on that song, like he's been faithful for a thousand generations. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. when you look at the the history of the church, when you look at the, the history of the world and our nation, like we've been through worse cultural moments than what we're yeah. in right now. Like it feels really hard because we're the ones living in it. Right. I saw a meme the other day that was like, I wish I wasn't living through the hundredth like cultural crisis of my lifetime. Like, right. And that feels like where we're at, but it's not that. And God right. was faithful in those situations. Absolutely. And, and he will continue to be. Right. So um, so you, ma- you made it personal uh, on, a, on a couple of fronts. Like, yeah. I loved, loved the story about Zara and the shoes. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I was preaching at the Shores campus, and I was listening to the 11 o'clock service driving back. And it was just such a real, like, thing that I know all parents can, oh. can relate to. And yeah. I, I've got it times three. So <laughs> <laughs> You do. Yeah. Three girls. Sheesh. Yeah, so th- it w- it was a very true story. You know, us pastors sometimes we can embellish stories, and this no, one never. Yeah, that right. Yeah, this one was straight up. It was last Sunday, eleven ten. Sarah Jo walks into service. I give her a hug and a kiss, and I immediately know something's up. I'm mm-hmm. like, "Hey, everything okay?" And she said, "Your daughter <laughs> couldn't find her shoes." And then Sarah Jo says, "Well, Zara, what could you have done differently?" And 
the answer was, well, just put away my shoes. But why do I have to put away my shoes if daddy doesn't put away his shoes? And, Dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the kill shot. <laughs> so, so even in church yesterday, I said, you better believe I've put away my shoes all week long, except... I guess yesterday morning I had a pair of sandals <laughs> underneath the stool. Sarah Jo said I wanted to take a picture and post it on Facebook and be like, I keep receipts, Foley. But <laughs> yeah, we, we've had a similar thing with like the girls like like thro- like uh, putting their laundry like in the floor when there's a hamper in their room. Yeah, uh-huh. I've gotten that text from Brittany before of a picture of my jeans laying next to the hair, she's yeah. like so close. Yeah, <laughs> like, just, yeah, just missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's all funny as that is, but the the point that I was trying to transition out of that is, uh, we've all experienced someone in our life saying, "Do what I say, not what I do." Right. And it's funny. It's silly. And mm-hmm. uh, there's been parenting moments where our kids are driving us nuts and like mm-hmm. just. Do what I say, not what I do. Um, but the reality is, uh, for us, it's hard for us to follow someone. It's hard for us to listen mm-hmm. to someone or take someone seriously if they're not living out. Yeah, you know, they're not practicing what they preach. Uh, not to use a, a cliche, but it works for us yeah. now. And um, I think what's beautiful about Jesus, and when it comes to having faith in Jesus, is that not only did he preach a good word. He mm-hmm. said good things. He also did what he said he would do. Right. And Jesus never asks us to do anything that he wasn't willing to do himself. Mm-hmm. Um, very literally, mm-hmm. you know, take up your cross and follow mm-hmm. all, all of it. Love your enemies. I mean, he, and so that can be encouragement for us, especially if we, if we struggle with faith, mm-hmm. faith in God. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked a lot about that yesterday, too, of how people have different aspects of how they struggle with faith in God yeah. because they've experienced disappointment in their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's one of those things that we wrestle with, but, again, it's to his, to his, uh, to his faithfulness in those, those situations. Um, so how do we start to recalibrate expectations, like... In, in, yeah. in the midst of disappointment, because yeah. that, that's part of it. Yeah, so that's a killer quote um, from Brene Brown, where she says, essentially, we have these two opportunities when it comes to disappointment. Uh, we have the opportunity to recalibrate our expectations and realize what matters most. And so mm-hmm. I said that the two options that we have is are the have are uh, we could sulk in our disappointments or we mm-hmm. can seek. Um, a lot of times when we've experienced deep-seated disappointments. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about little disappointments of, oh, I didn't get a green light this morning, or uh, the Dunkin' Donuts lady only put one Splenda in my coffee this morning. You know, those are minor things. But when we've experienced job loss or a death or a broken relationship, I mean, you name it, um, these disappointments can linger with us for a Mm -hmm. long time. As I was writing this sermon, I actually was thinking about... um, just sort of the time period of COVID that our world experienced, mm-hmm. there were a lot of disappointments. You know, oh, yeah. there yeah. are disappointments of of lockdowns. There are disappointments of not being able to socialize, of people getting sick. You know, just mm-hmm. the whole the whole yeah. thing. And a lot of those disappointments have carried for years for mm-hmm. people, missed opportunities. Um, and so. What do we do with those disappointments? Mm-hmm. Do we continue to sulk or do we seek and try to understand like what is really most important in our lives uh, and answer questions like what what am I afraid of? Mm. Uh, why why am I so angry? Why do I feel like I've lost something mm-hmm. when it comes to disappointments? And those are great questions for us to really wrestle with and and I would suggest maybe even wrestle with another trusted person yeah. around those questions. Um, because if we just get stuck in our disappointment, we never grow, we never move mm-hmm. forward. And, and disappointments can quickly turn into regret. Mm-hmm. Um, and resentment. And resentment, and, yeah, right. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And, and those are, I didn't even talk about that yesterday, mm-hmm. but those are brutal. I mean, to, to live a life full of regret and resentment, no one wants to do that. No. No one wants to do that. And so we have a choice to begin seeking and trying to answer some difficult questions when it mm-hmm. comes to when it comes to disappointments. 
Do you think one of the things that, that we find when we really lean into seeking is part of what um, leads to those disappointments is putting our faith in the wrong places? For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And a lot of times we, we put our faith, if we're not putting our faith in God, we put our faith in a few other things. We put our faith in ourself. Mm-hmm. Or we, I, can, I can will it. I'm going to mm-hmm. make it happen. If it's going to be, it's, it's going to be me. Mm-hmm. Um, or we say, no one else can do as good as me, so I'm just mm-hmm. going to handle it. Um, that self-reliance, which it's good to have some self-confidence. Yeah. Um, but when you have self-reliance like that, you are going to disappoint yourself. And mm-hmm. then you begin, that can impact your identity, really, because mm-hmm. if you you feel like a failure and you think I am a failure, not that I failed or not, you know, because you're putting so much uh, value and faith into yourself. The other places, two other places are um, we put our faith in things, Mm -hmm. you know, in systems maybe Mm -hmm. or jobs or stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we, we experienced a massive cat five hurricane Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and, if you had your faith in a lot of stuff, houses and even mm-hmm. things like that, um, you're going to be sorely disappointed because mm-hmm. a lot of that vanished really quickly. Yeah. The other place, too, that uh, I would say most people put their faith in is other people. Mm. We like to put people on pedestals, um, and people don't stay on pedestals mm. that long, unfortunately. No. I mean, you can go around every sector of society and find leaders who have failed mm-hmm. in some capacity, moral failure, mm-hmm. ethical failure. Um, or just didn't cut it, right. you know? And then sometimes we put our faith in to people that we look up to, maybe close friends or relatives, mm-hmm. and, and then they disappoint us. They say mm-hmm. something that hurts us, um, that wounds us. They don't show up. They don't respond in a way that we mm-hmm. think they would. Um, and so then we're disappointed. And, and so with, with all of those disappointments and putting faith in institutions or things or people mm-hmm. or ourselves... I can I can really understand why people would struggle in putting their faith in God. Yeah, because they've tried to put their faith in other people. I mean, I've heard people, um, sadly, too many times say, "I can't trust anyone," mm-hmm. and they say that because they have put their faith in people and their trust mm-hmm. has been broken. So, how in the world do you put your faith in an invisible God? Yeah, when <laughs> when every other thing, every other person has disappointed me so bad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And so the hope that we have really is founded in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, faith is the assurance of uh, what we cannot see and the hope mm-hmm. that we have essentially in Christ. You know, I've, I, uh, And if we look in the life of Jesus, and I said this earlier, he did what he said. Mm-hmm. He, he always did what he said. And he's the embodiment of God, the Son of God, you know, God incarnate. And so we can have hope... And trust in Jesus, we can put our faith in him because he is faithful. And that mm-hmm. leads to the firm foundation. Mm-hmm. Now, I know people who struggle with faith in God because of life circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know, we hear a lot that the question, why do bad things happen to good people? It's the number one question yeah. I've gotten as a pastor. Yeah. 16 years. Yep. If and God is so good mm-hmm. and all powerful, all loving, all good, why do bad things happen to good right. people? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, sometimes we can we can we can explain a little bit of that. Um, I love Mother Teresa said that uh, she doesn't know the answer to that, but God's gonna have a lot of explaining to do when she gets to yeah. heaven um, when it comes to suffering in the world. But I would say a couple things. I once uh, had a pastor say to me, he said, sometimes we ask that question, why do bad things happen to good people? Instead, the question we should be asking is why do good things happen to broken people? Hmm. And we're all broken yeah. people. You know, we're, and none of us are perfect. It, yeah. yeah, and it does reframe it a little bit. Um, it still doesn't answer the, the total question. And, and we have to remind people a lot that God allows all things. He doesn't cause all mm-hmm. things. And unfortunately, we do get moments where people will, will say, oh, well, God wanted this to happen. Yeah. Or there's been the death of a loved one. God wanted another. Ain't no. God... Yeah. God God doesn't cause these things. However, Mm -hmm. God is able to take the broken things of this world Mm -hmm. because we live in a sin-filled, broken world. Mm -hmm. And he's able to use those things for his good. Mm -hmm. Um, He's he's able to take terrible situations Mm -hmm. and redeem them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that when people are struggling with faith in that way, 
I, as a pastor, just want to remind them, know that you have a God that loves you. Mm-hmm. We, scripture tells us that when Jesus was sad, he wept. Mm-hmm. When he lost a loved one. Um, and, and you have a God that's always there with you. Yeah. And, th- and that reframes it from why God yeah. to how God is with us in, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of bad things. Um, and that's just an unfortunate theological thing that has happened in some church circles and, you know, people, you know, bad theology, still bad theology, even when it's written on a Hallmark card. Uh, I remember when I was doing clinical pastoral education in a hospital, um, I was assigned to the mother baby unit. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was, there was a couple that was tragically going through what was going to be a very short life after, after birth. Um, and the chaplain that was handing off to me, um, I, I heard them say to them, like, God has his reasons. And something just didn't, it mm. welled in me weird. And they just seemed so closed off. And I just had this moment of saying to them, like, God thinks this is awful. Yeah. And he's with you in this and, yeah. and, and weeping beside you. And that changed the whole dynamic. Yes. In the room. So that's, I, just, I think that's a helpful reframing to the, to the question of evil, or the question of suffering. Like, yeah. we don't have the answers yeah. to, to everything or maybe almost anything. Like, right. we see people in suffering and I, I don't have answers. I do know that God is with you. Right. And, and uh, you helpfully took us to, to Lamentations mm-hmm. uh, yesterday and uh, how many of the Psalms are laments. Like, like God's people understand the suffering and they also understand that God is with us right. in it. And, yeah. and that, that's a helpful, helpful reframe, I think. Um, and it all points back to God's faithfulness. Right, yeah. Yeah, so when it comes to laments, I don't think we as a society lament well. Mm-hmm. We air our grievances on social media. We don't air our grievances to God because for a lot of us, we think, um, well, I can't be angry at God or I can't show my frustration mm-hmm. t- to God. But he's big enough. He yeah. can handle it. Yeah, he can handle your ugly. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we see it in, in Scripture where uh, psalmists write out or, or, you know, in Lamentations where where they have their brokenness and, and it's... I mean, it's, you re- raw it, it's, it's raw and it's real. Yeah. It's like, I mean, there's times where David calls out for God to strike down his enemies. And right. I'm like, David, I, the loving God that we talk about, I yeah. don't think that's what, you know, anyways, there, there's a little bit of it's just, But of it's separation. the rawness of his emotion. It and is. he knows he can share that He with can God. share and God can handle yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And uh, the love of God doesn't disappear because mm-hmm. of him sharing his emotions. And, and what I love about uh, in Lamentations 3 is that we're, we're reminded that even in our disappointment, in our mm-hmm. hurt, in our, um, I mean, you can even say resentment or regret mm-hmm. or, or whatever, God is still faithful. Mm-hmm. I love it that his mercies are new every day. Yeah. I, I, I need to hear that every mm-hmm. day um, as a dad who, mm-hmm. I'm not a perfect dad and I mess up. Um, leave shoes on the floor. Leave yeah. shoes on the floor. <laughs> I mean, yeah, terrible example for my kids. And Yeah, but the... Uh, um, I need to be reminded there's new mercies every day yeah. for me. There's new mercies every day for my kids, but yeah. there's also new mercies for everyone. That's right. the goodness of God. Um, and and so he He can be our our faithful God, our, mm-hmm. our God filled with loving kindness. Mm-hmm. And uh, we need to be reminded of that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's all those things of who God is and his mm-hmm. character that makes it possible for for Jesus to be our firm foundation mm-hmm. for our life. We can build our lives on those truths yeah. of who God is. Yeah, and you you took us to the Sermon on the Mount briefly, um, and I think it was so helpful that you pointed out that Jesus didn't say if storms come, like <laughs> yeah. like, like you build your foundation on the right yeah. thing, and then if storms come, you're set up. Yeah. No, when the storm came. When the when yeah. Because that that's just the reality of the human condition of life on mm-hmm. on planet Earth. Yeah. And, yeah. One of the uh, great things and terrible things of living in Florida in the summer is it's going to rain. Mm-hmm. Every afternoon, it's going to rain. About 3 o'clock That's for 20 right. minutes, right? And, and it's going to be torrential, mm-hmm. right? Um, but uh, that's a good reminder for us that that's how the storms of life yeah. come, that we can't shield ourselves from mm-hmm. disappointments or bad things or storms in life. Mm-hmm. And even as parents, as dads, we want to shield our kids yeah. you know, from those things. But the reality of life is storms come. Yeah. Yep. And... And the choice that we have in, in all of that is how 
how do we stabilize our lives yeah. to prepare for those storms, to mm-hmm. prepare for adversity, mm-hmm. and what's our response mm-hmm. to that? And and I think uh, there are a lot of times that we fool ourselves that mm-hmm. we've uh, built our lives on solid mm-hmm. rock, but we're actually building it on sand, where we say, well, I'm going to church. Mm-hmm. I pray. I I read my Bible. Mm-hmm. But it, it's actually not, we're not doing what Jesus says. And, you yeah. Know, where he, it's simple, and I told people, I said, I'm sorry if you were hoping for something a little bit more deeper, you know, yeah, this come morning. On, yeah. but, but the reality is, it, Jesus, we need that reminder that we need to listen to what mm-hmm. Jesus says, and we need to do what he says. Mm-hmm. And that is simple, mm-hmm. and that is very hard. Yeah. It is really hard. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say, it's hard to live out. Yeah. But whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise person who built their house on the rock. Right. It, yep. it is that simple. Yes. Living it out, though, is yeah, a totally different it's thing. It's so hard. It's so hard. And um, so we talked about listening, and and it can be difficult reading Scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love sitting down and talking to people about where to start reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. If you're wondering, if you're trying to check out where to read the Bible, I, I would say start with John, mm-hmm. and then read the rest of the Gospels, mm-hmm. and then start going in other places, work mm-hmm. your way through the New Testament. It's so much easier to read the Old Testament and the whole Bible mm-hmm. through the lenses of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love talking to people about that, but it's also important if you don't, if you have questions about mm-hmm. scripture to, to go to a trusted resource, mm-hmm. a commentary or a friend, a pastor, mm-hmm. someone, um, because it can be discouraging when we read something like, I don't understand this and yeah. we, or then we're done, you yeah. know, we're done with that and practice. As one of the pastors, I love those questions yeah. because it, I know that there's a hunger stirring in people, yeah. and it, it's it's never been a I'm going to stump the preacher kind right. of question. It's it's from a, a true desire to learn. I love getting those yeah, questions, absolutely. and if if we don't have an answer, we're gonna we're gonna work through it with yeah, you, and, yeah, and absolutely, we're, we're all on this journey together. Yeah, it helps us grow too. Yeah, yeah, and so I think some of the challenges that we have when it comes to listening to God, particularly in His Word, is creating space to be quiet. Mm to actually slow down. We live in a very fast-paced society. And one opportunity that we have at the Cape Campus is we're doing our solitude course. Mm-hmm. Um, that's August 28th. It's at four weeks and just working through that practice of having solitude time mm-hmm. away with God. And I, I would encourage anyone who's, who's wanting to um, get some exposure to that or experiment with that or check it mm-hmm. out, come join us. Mm-hmm. It's free. There's a free dinner. Mm-hmm. So that's a win for me and child yeah. care. So yeah. <laughs> if it's free, it's for me. That's right. Um, but when it comes to listening to God, I think that's uh, – we have to set aside that time, and then we have to try to treat listening to God in a way that we want to understand mm-hmm. and how and understand how to impact our livelihood. Mm-hmm. Because then our natural response is to do what Jesus said. I'll say one last thing, too. I think some of the – in our society where we've seen people experience um, spiritual harm – has been in environments where people have listened to the Word of God, but they haven't done the Word of God. Mm-hmm. You know, they haven't, they haven't, they, they listen to what Jesus said, mm-hmm. but they don't do what Jesus said. Yeah. And so then they put that pressure on other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I, I don't think we create those environments here at Grace Church, but I, I would just, as a pastor, just apologize to anyone who's yeah. experienced that because that's not the heart of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's important that we listen to him, but then we do what he says. And the, mm-hmm. some of the best ways that we can do the, the words of Jesus is just creating practices mm-hmm. of serving, of um, being in community with other people yeah. who are trying to do what Jesus says. It creates accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, accountability is tough stuff, but if you mm-hmm. find yourself in an accountable relationship with someone else when it comes to your relationship with Jesus... Yeah. You're more likely to do it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm held accountable to a, a coach of mine, a pastor, who uh, he asked me a couple things about my health and my spiritual health mm-hmm. and all that. And this past week, he he asked me. Uh, I said, Hey, I need to, I need to go to the gym more. He said, That's great. How many days a week? Mm-hmm. Like four days a week. That's great. He didn't like what to be day, ambiguous. Yeah, what, no. what days? <laughs> I said the four days. He said, Great. What time? Mm-hmm. That's the time. He said anything else? I'm like, no, 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 no. because I'm gonna have to do it. And, yeah. and you know what? I I met with him on Wednesday last week, and I told him Thursday was gonna be the first day of that new week. And 
and I didn't want to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. I was like, dang it, he's going to ask me. Gonna ask me so I got to go. But I say all that because um, if we have some a group of people or one mm-hmm. person who's sort of holding us accountable to mm-hmm. to doing what we said we're going to do, yeah. um, we end up doing it. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and I think another way that we can do what Jesus says is uh, at Grace Church and all of our campuses – if you combine all the opportunities of ministries at all three of our yeah, campuses, it's 200, 250, 300 mm-hmm. like ministry. It's insane. There's there's a place for you. Yeah. And uh, that's some of the best ways to live out the words of Jesus, to yeah. be the hands of feet. Yeah. Uh, I think where people get set up with the disappointment is when there's an expectation of perfection or whatever. Oh, and yeah. That's just... One of the things that I love here is we're all figuring this out. Like we're just doing our best to follow right. Jesus and make him king of our lives. Yeah. And we're going to figure this out together and and hold one another to it. And and there is no shortage of opportunities to jump in and figure out how you can use your gifts and talents mm-hmm. for, for the kingdom as you continue to, you know, try to understand Jesus and his word, mm-hmm. but to put it into practice at the same time. Like on the job training is, yeah. is incredible it's stuff. It's awesome. Yep. There are... Uh, uh, Stacy Knight, our children's director and director of Small Wonders Preschool, just was talking to me this morning about um, someone after church yesterday who was just looking for a place to serve and um, an older, and she loves babies, and so she's going to start rocking babies awesome. on Sunday morning. Just love on, love on these kids and love on parents mm-hmm. and create some space for people to go to church. And mm-hmm. that's simple, but that goes such a yeah. long way. Um, mm-hmm. I remember some of the people. My kids have grown up here at Grace Church from when they were born, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I remember the people that rocked my my mm-hmm. babies, you know, yeah. and, and I hold them in high mm-hmm. regard because, yes, what they are doing is kind, but they also are being obedient to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, I can't tell you what the first sermon I ever heard was, but I remember when I first started going to Sunday school, my teacher's name was Pearl Scheller. Wow. And she told me about Jesus. Like, we didn't go to church. We got dropped off at Sunday school to get out of the house. Yeah, like, okay. Get out of mom's house for a I got you. But yeah. I remember Pearl telling us the stories of Jesus. Isn't that something? Long before I came to follow Jesus. Right. I can't tell you the title of the first sermon I heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can t- or who the pastor was at the church, even. But she certainly was a part of your journey. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just That's her kindness great. and loving. And she knew that we weren't we weren't going into worship with all the other kids after. And she didn't treat my sister and I any differently than than anybody else. Yeah. You know? And but so I remember Pearl. Mm. When people so find good. those places to plug in, they they can make a difference. Not It makes a difference not only in our own journey of following Jesus, but mm-hmm. it will make a difference in someone else's journey yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if, if you had to wrap up the, the, the whole piece of, of firm foundation and uh, holding to, to faith in God's faithfulness, even in disappointment, if you had to give like a, just a, a one sentence takeaway, what would you want mm. people to take away from, okay. from that message? Yeah, I, it's all about God's faithfulness because even when we are trying to be faithful to God, there will be times where we get cracks in our foundation mm-hmm. and he's still faithful mm-hmm. and he, he can shore up that foundation mm-hmm. for us. You know, it's not a you mess up and you're out mm-hmm. time and type of thing. And I, th- I think that's the takeaway is, yes, we, we want to build our life upon Jesus. We want to hear what he says and do what he says. But we're human too and we will falter. But by the grace of God, his mercies are new every day. Yeah. And so we, we can come back, you know. Yeah. And so that's important for people to realize. One of the most beautiful things about church, um, and particularly Grace Church, uh, is you can always come home. Mm-hmm. You can always come home. It's, it's been a huge learning for me in, in the past several years that I, everything else I've built in my life could be taken away. The things we build on top of the foundation, you know, title, um, the things that, you know, that I spend my time and money on, those could all go away and I will still be just as loved by the king of the universe as I am right now. That's the foundation. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the hope and disappointment. Like I can really mess this up. Yeah. There's nothing I'm going to do. That's going to make him love me less. Right. And I can always come home to him. And you can, and you can build a life upon that. Yeah. Yeah. That's worth building. That's assurance. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, Taylor, thanks for this uh, this conversation. Uh, thanks for listening along. If this has been uh, helpful to you, uh, give us a like, give us a share um, out there in podcast world. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, I'm going to be sharing my song uh, next Sunday, and we'll be back uh, next week to talk about that. So I hope you're having a great week and building your life on, on the right things in Jesus. Have a great week. God bless.